As we come to the reading of our scripture, one of the things I encourage us to do is to read our scripture together. I think it, 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 it's a part of our, our act of worship. It's a part of us hearing the word of God, seeing the word of God, and, and having it enter into our hearts and our lives. It'll be on the screen behind me, but it's also in your worship folder. So if you would please join me in reading this morning. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow with me for a moment of prayer? Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your word. Again, your word is, is a, a powerful piece of our life. It, it continues to open us up to what you have and to open us up to who you're calling us to be, to be a, a disciple, to be a student of yours, to follow after you. Lord, as, as we look at Paul's words here today, I ask that you give us the insight we need, that our love may, may abound more and more, that we may grow in knowledge and in depth of insight so that we may be the pure, blameless children of God, that we may have the fruit of righteousness for your glory and praise. In your holy name, amen and amen. You ever have a goal? We may have a goal of, of getting through the day, maybe getting through the next uh, 20 minutes or depend upon how long I want to go. Maybe the goal is to, to get through the month, get through the year. Maybe the goal is to have enough for retirement. Maybe the goal is to be with grandchildren. Maybe the goal is, is to, uh, to be. As we, we look at the end of this Philippians, the end of this, the end of this look at Philippians, we see Paul has a goal. And, and goals are, are, are out there. We, we, if we, we've been talking about Great Expectations, the book by Charles Dickens, and, and his goal, I think, in writing this book for us, or this book, was to show the differences in class structures and to see how that lived out and how happy people were at different classes. We also have a goal of, of who God has called us to be, right? A spiritual goal. As Paul was finishing up this letter to the church in Philippi, he's, he, he comes out to this point, he says, and, and this is why verse 12 was important, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took a hold of me. See, Paul just got done talking about all the things that he had, that he had. He was the, the Jewish person, that he was the top of the list. He had everything, but he counted it all as rubbish, remember? Garbage, even more words that we could use to describe that. He didn't think it was worth much because, he, because of what he saw in Christ. 
And he says, you know what, I have this goal. I, not that I've already obtained this goal, but I have this goal to, to, to grab a hold of Jesus. Just like Jesus has grabbed a hold of me. Remember Paul's story? As he's walking down the road to Damascus, as he's traveling down that, that road, he comes to that point where the, uh, where, where the light, great light comes and blinds him, and he hears that voice, and, 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 and we don't know what's going on inside of, Paul, inside of Paul, but he's wrestling for three days <coughs> Excuse me. before Ananias comes to him, lays hands on him, and the scales fall out of his eyes, and he starts to preach. In those moments, Jesus has taken a hold of him. Paul believes that Jesus has grabbed all that he, all that he is and is holding on to it. Jesus knows who Paul is. He knows his coming and his going if we're going in the Psalms. If we look, continue to look at Psalms, he knows our rising and our sitting, our words that come out of our mouth before we even say them. He knows our heart. He knows where we are. And, and Paul says, he's grabbed a hold of me, and my goal is to grab a hold of him just like he has a hold of me. Grabbing a hold of him and, and holding on to him so that I may know him fully just as he knows me fully. And it's not something that I've attained, but it's something I'm going for. It's something that I strain for. And Paul has this beautiful, beautiful picture, this beautiful word image that, that is hard, and, and I can't give it justice because... Uh, uh, I'm not an athlete, per se. But if you have in your mind, you think about the, the, uh, a track and field. You think about those who are racing. And as they come up to the finish line, and you think about the, the, the tight race that it is, and, and you have them running, and you have them stretching, and you can see all the muscles tense and firm, and, and you see them straining to get there first. Paul says, that's what I'm doing. All that I have, <coughs> excuse me, is being strained and moving towards that moment where I can grab a hold of Jesus and have and, and, and see him for who he is. All that I am, all my entire being, all those things I had before are rubbish, but all that I have now is straining for that moment. And, and I'm pressing forward for this moment. That's Paul's goal. That, that's his heart. That's where he is. And, 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 and he's laying that out to the church in Philippi. And, and we have that as our, our Wesleyan heritage. That's a part of who we are too. We have John Wesley, uh, the, the founder of the, the Methodist movement. John Wesley had this idea of grace. He called it, get ready, it's a big word, sanctification. But it's a word that means being holy, moving on in holiness, straining on forward, straining on to what's there, straining on to, uh, to a grab hold of God as God has a grabbed hold of us. All that we are. Now, Paul says it would take a lifetime and even beyond that to know Christ that well. And I think Wesley would agree with the same way. It was Wesley said there's a, a sense that we have this entire sanctification, a perfected love, he called it. And, and that's a little different than what Paul is talking about because in that perfected love, John Wesley uh, said that it's a, the love that God has for us that we have for others. A love that goes beyond anything and everything. And, and, and Paul is saying something different. Paul is saying, you know what, we are, we, Paul is straining forward to grab a hold of all of Christ, all that he is, all the forgiveness, all the love, all the mercy, all the grace, all the wisdom and knowledge and strength, all that Christ offers. And, and, and Paul says, you know, we're going to have these moments that we need to remember that this is our goal. We're going to have these times that, that, that he, and he says, be imitators of me because this is what I'm doing. Many times, uh, and maybe you've read it like I have, we keep thinking that Paul is kind of a, a bloated ego in that moment. 
be imitators of me because I know what's going on. I think what Paul's really saying is I'm giving it my best and I'm giving it my all and I'm trying to grab a hold of Christ as he has grabbed a hold of me and, and I want you to follow that part of me. Not my failures, not my inadequacies or inconsistencies but my heart that is straining with all that it has to grab a hold of this Christ, this forgiveness, this, this part of God that I can grab a hold of. He says there's going to be false teachers out there. There's going to be people who, who will not take you down this road, who, who will take you down a road that leads to destruction, a road that fills their stomach, that brings shame. It's, it's a road that doesn't lead to God. And you'll see those markers, he says. You, you'll, he doesn't describe those markers in this end of this passage, but he says that there are markers, there are signs out there. Some of those signs may be who's being glorified. Is it God being glorified in this moment? Is it God being lifted up and praised, or is it me? Or is it the individual? What's the motive? What's the reason? What's the why, the purpose behind that? Is it God leading you, calling you, and and urging you, and and lifting you up? Is it for God's glory? Is it so others will hear about Christ, so others will see who God is, while others will understand that forgiveness, that grace, that peace that passes all understanding? Is there love? Is there joy? Is there peace? Is there gentleness? Is there um, self-control? Is there faith? Or is it pointing somewhere else? And as as Paul was running this race, as Paul was straining with all that he has and all that he is toward this prize of grabbing hold of Christ, he says that there will be one day. There will be one day that that I will... uh, Get my words out again. There'll be one day I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And this is another image that we may not understand completely, but but it's an image that is is based in in the culture of the day. Think of it this way. Think of it uh, that there'll be a day where where as as, uh, the winners of a race or the people who run the race, they're, they're called to the podium to receive their prize. And at this moment, this is God standing there calling Paul to give him his prize, which is Christ Jesus. A prize of the the death and the resurrection, the prize of having that glorious body, that prize of having that citizenship in heaven, that prize of being there with God himself. And and that's that's what Paul's pressing on towards. He knows he can't do it on his own. He knows it's not by his power. It's by, by God's power, by God's strength. It's by God's hands that he is reaching this goal. I know our, our goals can be different. I, I know that our goals will, can lead us to different places. I was, uh, I've been working with a leadership coach for the last couple of months, and, and we had a goal-setting time, and, we had, and he, his exercise was to uh, allow me to describe my goal. And I said, a goal is stretching. A, a goal stretches, us beyond, stretches me beyond my limits. And, and this is my definition. A, a goal is, is something that's measurable, it's achievable, it's attainable, it's something I can celebrate, accomplished. Something that, that, that it, it, again, R is reachable or, or uh, can grasp in a timely manner. And, and as I've been thinking about that, that goal and I've been thinking about what that means in my life and thinking about what this word and that Paul gives us in Philippi, in Philippians, I see the same thing. I, I see that, that Paul was stretching and reaching and straining and going for it and, and giving it all that he has. And in my mind, I think, can I do the same thing? 
forgetting what is behind me, forgetting those things that can pull me down and pull me back, and forgetting the, 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 the mistakes, the sins that may hold on. I look forward to that moment where I can see Christ and see him only. And I can, I can grasp a hold of, of who he is, just like he has a hold of me. And maybe we ought to start there. Maybe we ought to begin at that moment in time. Just go back to the moment when you first met Jesus. And you saw that Jesus, uh, would, would, uh, that Jesus loves you with all that you are, for who you are, for what you do. That Jesus loves you. And he, he surrounds you. And he, and he grasps your heart. For some, that, that might have been a few years ago. For some, it, it might be right now. You have that, that understanding that, that God knows you and has a hold of you through your struggles, through your days, through your ugliness, through your beauty, through everything. He has a hold of you, right? Now, what if you turned that around and you wanted to grasp Jesus in that same what would you do? What would you do differently? What would you continue to encourage? What would you continue to reward in your own heart and in your own life? Uh, would it continue to be praying and speaking to God? Would it continue to be looking in your word and understanding what, what God is saying and trying to live that out? Would it be helping your neighbor? Would it be thinking of others more than you think of yourself? Would it be reaching out and, and seeking forgiveness? Would it be reaching out and giving forgiveness? Would it be easy? No. Will it be worth it? I agree with Paul and say yes. Not just Paul, John Wesley, other Christians throughout the ages. Because I think that's what, what that imitators of Christ is what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Isn't that the, the word that we have? Love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And then going out and teaching, making disciples, teaching them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them what God has commanded us. Isn't that part of our, our goal, a part of a, being a disciple, part of straining toward grabbing hold of Christ, just as he has grabbed a hold of us? I think that's the goal, and that's a great goal to have. Is it an easy one? No. Will it take hard work? Oh, yes. Yes, it will. Paul uses other terms as an athlete is training for the race. So we train and grasp hold of Christ. What will you do this day? Will you grab a hold of Jesus? Will you change a few things? Will you let God's Spirit speak into your heart and begin that movement? that transformation, that confirmation in your heart that you will be, that you are a citizen of heaven. And Paul's final words that he says to the Philippi church, I think words that are very apt for us today. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the way of the Lord in this way. Will you stand firm in your straining, in your grasping? Will you stand firm in following after your Lord and your Savior? Will you stand firm in who you are? 
in God, a, bro a daughter and a son with Christ.